Hello there, uh, Reed here, and today we're going to be looking at kind of like a Hearts of Iron 4, a little bit of a review and kind of just a look at it, okay? Um, so, you know, off the top, I'm a big fan of Paradox Interactive Games. All the games they make, their strategy ones are just great. Europa Universalis 4, Crusader Kings 2, Victoria 2 is one of my personal favorites. Can't wait till Victoria 3 if they do make it. You know, we're all waiting. But anyways, yeah, um, Hearts of Iron 4... You know, I kind of jumped in at Hearts of Iron 3. I did jump in a little bit late, and I had a lot of issues with Hearts of Iron 3. I had a hard time getting into it. I thought it was very linear, and overall, I just had a hard time, you know what I mean, just getting used to the game. It wasn't explained very well. It was very confusing, and, you know, it was just not that great of a game. It was great, you know, of a it was a great game. Not a great paradox game, if that makes any sense to you guys. Now, uh, before we kind of just sit in the whole Hearts of Iron 3 topic, we're going to jump forward to the Hearts of Iron 4 topic. And really, I mean, this game, I think, off the top, fixed everything that was wrong with its predecessor. Here's the big issue, though. It also ruined some things that the predecessor actually did a little bit better. And and it really, honestly, this um, only appeals to certain people, because actually, I think it's, a, it's an overall better game. Some people think that, you know, some things in here aren't as great. And I'm going to go into that a little bit right here. And you, off the top, just looking at the game, and actually, I um, put some gameplay up here on the screen so you guys can kind of see just a little bit of what's going on with the game. The graphics look amazing. I love how you can zoom out and zoom back in in the map, and it kind of changes how the map looks a little bit. It'll get rid of the, rid of, it gets rid of the, uh, sorry about that, it gets rid of the shading um, of the... Uh, of the countries, and I, I love how borders kind of shift over time with wars. I love the way the terrain looks, the weather effects are awesome, and the night and day effects are really cool as well. It really kind of brings the map to life. That's one thing that Hearts of Iron 3 really missed out on. It really had kind of a bland board game looking map. This one definitely looks a lot better, and just the sun reflecting off the water even just looks great, just seeing that kind of sunlight change. Um, you can, it really kind of helps you plan your strategies out as well if you play on that kind of slower speed, which I, I personally don't, but you know, a lot of people do. Um, so yeah, off the top, graphics... Oh my goodness, so great. Um, then there's kind of a little bit better thing here. So with flexibility, and this was a big issue with Hearts of Iron 3. In Hearts of Iron 3, you were very much pigeonholed. So if you wanted to play as the United States in Hearts of Iron 3, it was very, very, very difficult for you to switch sides and join the common turn or the Axis. Uh, if you wanted to play as France and join Germany, very difficult to do. If you wanted to play as Italy and flip sides, pretty tricky. Soviet Union, almost impossible to flip sides. This is one thing that Hearts of Iron 4 does fix just tremendously. Hearts of Iron 4, you can play as France, join Germany. There's actually like a specific path that you can follow with your nation, national ideas to kind of push you in that direction, which is awesome. Italy can flip sides against Germany. Germany can not even start World War II if you want, which I mean you could do in, in Hearts of Iron 3, but there wasn't much of a point. France can form its own faction. France can team up with Italy and kind of go against Germany that way if it wants. Uh, France can choose to defend Czechoslovakia or not defend Czechoslovakia when Germany goes into the Sudetenland. Um, you can play during the Spanish Civil War. And really, on top of this, uh, any country you want, you can kind of turn it into either the uh, allies, the, kind of the dem democratic side, the common turn, the communist side, or the fascist side. And it's really cool how you do this, because you can kind of either just play it through and, and slowly increase the political party size until it gets to a certain point. And then when it hits that certain point, you can either say, hey, you know what, we'll let these people take control, we'll let the fascists take control of the country, but, you know, the country won't be as united, which means we might lose a war a little bit easier, people will be willing to surrender within our country a little bit faster, or you can start a civil war in your country over it, and I think that is one of the coolest things in this game, is just the ability to, you know, as an example, play as Mexico, flip into a fascist dictatorship, but fight a civil war in Mexico, trying to just <laughs> establish a fascist dictatorship, it's just crazy how, how much flexibility they did to add, they definitely listened to the community here, because that was a big issue with Hearts of Iron 3. You were very much locked into whatever side you had, the Allies, Common Turn, or Axis, and you couldn't form your own factions, whereas in this one, uh, almost every game, I see Poland form its own faction with Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, and you see a whole bunch of other factions form, and even as France, I could form the Domin uh, Domination of Francia with Italy. You know, it's a very fun game. They improved a ton of stuff with this guy. You know, on top of that, I mean, the gameplay... Just great. I love the the thing that they added here. They really simplified kind of a lot of the mechanics that really made the game really difficult to get into Hearts of Iron 3. Now it's very easy to jump in. It's very easy to learn. It's easy to, underst easy to understand how things are produced, how to increase your production, how to create armies, how to add armies to, or how to add units to different groups, um, and even how to set up battle plans, which is always an issue I had in Hearts of Iron 3. Uh, it's very simple as drawing borders, and you can draw fronts that you want your armies to create and kind of march along those, and it'll create arrows along the line. It just looks amazing. It looks extremely stellar. Honestly, just a great experience. Now, this is actually where one of the big issues comes in with the game, though, is a lot of people, and this doesn't even include myself. This is just, you know, what a lot of people think about the game. Um, 
a lot of people think they simplified the kind of battle mechanics a little bit too much. They would like that micromanaging aspect where you could take control of a specific unit and kind of help it maneuver through different areas of Europe to try to win the war for your side. Uh, not really something that I really care a lot about. I'm, I'm a much bigger fan of just the big whole war ver or army versus army kind of a guy, line versus line. So nothing that really affected me too much. But if you are kind of after that micromanaging experience, then, you know, it might be a knock against the game. You're not, you don't have as much control as you used to have in the other games. On top of this, um, one thing I talk about now, and they, they simplify things a ton, one thing I'm not a big fan of, and this is honestly my biggest knock against the game, is just that the diplomacy can be a little bit stale. It's kind of goofy when you try to interact with other countries. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me inherently. It's very hard to kind of set up your own little, you know, dominoes to help make them fall in the future. Because a lot of countries just won't want to talk to you for whatever reason. And there's like a world tension system, which I totally understand. I just think it needs to be a little bit more revamped. But there's a world tension system that decides what things can happen that certain countries can do. Certain countries can't join al uh, alliances if the world isn't in a high enough tension point, which makes sense. But I wish you had a little bit more flexibility with stuff like that. Um... On top of that, one thing that I always had an issue with is is the swing for peace. Really, it looks like the only way to win wars in this game. And I could honestly, I could be totally wrong here. Maybe and by the time maybe you guys watch this, maybe you'll, they'll see an update for this. But one of my biggest issues with the game was, as an example, I was playing as France. Me and Italy formed a little alliance took on Germany, defeated Germany. I'm over here sitting in Europe, super powerful. Never had to fight fight Britain and the Allies. I was my own faction. I invade uh, Belgium, which wasn't part of an alliance. Halfway through the war, Belgium joins the Allies. Uh, and I was, I wish I would have gotten the op option to say, oh, hey, I want to white piece out of this because I don't want to fight, you know, Britain, the United States. I don't want to get dragged into war with Russia and all these other countries. I don't want to fight all these guys because then it's a never ending war. And honestly, I think that kind of makes the game boring for me a little bit. I'd ra much rather just pick off little guys for at least for a little bit while I can. And no, no option for white peace. It's unconditional war with Great Britain, and I was not willing to play that game, and it honestly kind of ruined my save game. I was a little irritated about that. I put a little sour spot in my mouth, but the game's great. I definitely come back to it after that, and I just have to start a new game because, whew, just those little things in there. But, you know, the kind of that being said, it's little knocks like that that could, you know, ruin what could be a perfect little gem. And on top of that, of course, it does follow that kind of strategy that the Paradox games tend to follow, which is, you know, release a good game, um, but release it kind of bland a little bit, and of course, they'll pepper in their DLCs here and there, which will make the game amazing. They really will. They'll add, you know, stuff here. They'll probably fix the uh, diplomacy situation. They'll make the colonies better, which is the DLC that they have released to make the colonies a little bit better. They'll make, you know, alliances a little bit better, factions. They'll add stuff for units. You know, they'll add all that kind of stuff, but the DLC will be far in between. It'll be expensive, and it will drag it out. And that's my eh, biggest complaint against the company of Paradox in the past. I understand they need to do it. The, uh, the studio's got to make money. I don't blame for it it's just <coughs> excuse me comes off as a little bit you know money grabbing which kind of sucks and honestly it, it almost feels like they're not releasing the full game on purpose but you know what nitpicky the game's great um and I mean, honestly, if you guys do love strategy, especially World War II games, I would definitely recommend picking it up, especially if it's on sale. If it's full price, eh, maybe. Um, you know, but if it's on sale, grab this game immediately. Yeah, I don't think you need the first DLC right now. It doesn't do much else that mods don't, unless you really want to play as like a, a Dominion or a Colony. Just grab the base game, play the game for a while, you know, just play around with it, you know, kind of change history a little bit. That's really what these games are great at. It's just being able to go in there, you know, make Germany win World War II, make America join Germany, make America join the Russians, make the Russians switch over to some other side and maybe join the Germans or something, you know, just do something crazy and have fun with it. That's really what makes the game great. Um, and really the only other knock, just while I remember this, is I did notice on a couple of computers, a little bit of graphical difficulties, uh, even on some nice rigs, but you know what, after I just modified the settings a little bit and, and I honestly just did like a kind of a restart, work just fine. Paradox really made a gem here. The game looks beautiful. The game plays um, amazingly. I love the controls. Super easy to get into, at least compared to a lot of the other games. Um, biggest issues, uh, sometimes a little bit too simple, especially with diplomacy. Uh, unconditional wars are a little bit too crazy, and the DLC policy, you know? And I, I just kind of wanted to give a little bit of a robust kind of look at the game. I'm glad you guys tuned in to kind of, you know, listen for a little bit. I hope you guys did enjoy this kind of look at the game. I would definitely recommend getting it, especially if it's on sale. If you love strategy, if you love World War II, get this game. You will love it. You won't regret it. Um, absolutely, you guys have a great night, all right? And I just, and you know what? Just take my advice. Don't take the advice. Totally up to you. I think it's a great game. See you guys.